Well, my name is Don Parks. I've been a builder here in Rotorua all my life. The earth building is just one of the aspects of building that I've uh, been interested in. Always been a bit of a greenie as well, and we've used a lot of recycled materials. Uh, the roofs on these earth houses, um, called onduline, are made out of waste cardboard mixed with bitumen. Um, they last a very, very long time. But again, it's a waste material. You don't have to cut any more trees down or, or mine anything to produce it. If you look at the future, if we carry on the way we are, no one's going to be able to live on this plant in a couple of hundred years' time. Sometime or other, we're going to have to start conserving things and becoming a little more considerate of the planet and if others are going to be able to enjoy it the way we do. Well, it's a fairly complex sort of a thing, really. You've got to have very, very fine material right up through to coarser material. Um, and you've got to experiment with the different soils available until you find a seam or a quarry that is suitable. And not all soils are suitable. But I found a quarry that had a suitable seam in it. But I say it had a grey colour to it when we added cement, which I didn't like too much. So I went further afield and I found a quarry over near Matamata that had a very yellow, orangey yellow soil with a much higher clay content. But I found that by mixing them 50-50, our local soil and the orange soil, we got a very suitable soil with a, an attractive colour, as you can see. The biggest job for us here, the, the hardest part of it, is keeping your soil dry enough that it's not going to pug up when you ram it. It's possible, but it does impose a lot of constrictions. You've got to build a tent, if you like, to keep your soil in. You can't let uh, rain get onto it. You can never dry it out again. The materials are cheaper, but there's fairly labour intensive. We built a big mixer. It was self-propelled, actually. And uh, it came out of a ready-mix plant in uh, Lower Hutt. We loaded it with a bobcat. It took three buckets of soil and two bags of cement. It mixed it up and then it ejected it out the bottom. You drove the bobcat in and it dropped the soil into the bobcat bucket. So that side of it was relatively uh, uh, simple for us because I've seen some people who mix it by hand with a shovel on a board. You still have to shovel it into the boxing, which has to be erected first. But shovel it in and ram it in layers, approximately four inches thick. And that takes quite a long time to work up a wall eight feet high. Well, you've got to be careful with erosion, certainly. Um, this one has not been painted on the outside. Um, but all the other five I have done have been painted on the outside and on the inside too, frankly. Um, I think it's important in New Zealand where we get a fairly high rainfall. If you're going to avoid erosion, you've got to paint it or seal it in some way. Well, you get passive solar heating. Um, that's the sun on the outside of the wall will heat the wall up and the warmth will be let off into the room during the, the evening. Um, that's a real advantage. In the winter time, you don't lose the heat, conversely. If you light a fire to warm the place, the warmth is absorbed into the walls and retained instead of with a, a less insulating type of material that would pass straight through. It's got a good solid feel to it. Um, that appeals to me. And of course, it's longevity. One particular house down just out of Nelson, it's called Top House. It's uh, on one of the trade routes out of Nelson. It's 150 years old. Its foundations consist of stone slabs laid in the ground. Uh, it was built by the farmer that owned the place and is still being lived in 150 years later. That's three other average house lifetimes. So that has to be an advantage. Well, a friend of mine who uh, went through the last war uh, in Italy said at any time the Germans attacked he said they'd all head for the earth houses <laughs> because they were bulletproof. The walls are a foot thick, um, they're very strong, they're designed to withstand our earthquakes, um, they're reinforced accordingly. The soundproof quality is uh, excellent as well. Uh, from room to room you just don't hit that noise transference that you would get elsewhere. But the best bit, I think, is the fact that um, if a house lasts 150 years, then you're not cutting down endless trees uh, or processing all sorts of other materials to build more and more houses. 
worldwide, half the world's population does live in earth houses. So that speaks for itself. Thank you.